Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So now we are in another uh, day of this course. We are in another session. And we are almost at the end because in this time when we are um, ending this uh, session, we are going to have just, in this case, four days. And we are going to end this course. It's almost time to end it and it's very good. I hope you are uh, working on the platform and if you are not, you have time to do it because it's almost time to end this course. So need to be on date with the um, exercises and with uh, the platform. So now we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. And we were talking about the how and how to create questions. And in this time, we are going to see um, question and answers with how. So we are going to start because of the time, because we need to, to develop this uh, topic. So we have here the last thing that we were saying yesterday, and, and now we are going to develop the last part of this topic to continue with the other one. So we have now question and answers with how. So give me a second because something is doing it slowly. I have to take this to the side. Let me see. Okay. Give me a moment. That's the way. So we have question and answer with how. And these are some of the most common questions. We are going to do a list of the common question with how. So in this case, we are going to do it like a list. And we have the first one, how old are you? So in this case, we have this uh, question that is very, very common to ask when we are establishing a conversation with someone that we don't know. And this question is to um, ask for information. Esta primera pregunta es bastante básica y la utilizamos para obtener información de otra persona cuando no la conocemos. Esto habla de la edad. How old are you? And the very common um, answer for this question is, I am, 25 years old. Now we have another question and it says, how tall are you? How tall are you? Another question to uh, ask information about someone else or someone uh, new, or maybe we are just, um, or we have just the curiosity to know how tall, a person is. And in the answer is, I am almost seven feet. How are you? Another basic question. How are you? And then a specific uh, answer or common answer, I am fine, very simple. How much does the headphone cost? This is talking about the cost of something. And we have the answer for this question. They cost around. Twenty dollars. So in this case, we have some a uh, very, very common question that we ask when we are uh, beginning with this uh, process of learning a new language. And in this case, we have these four. Maybe the last one is not very common, but in this case, uh, we can use it to ask 
for the price of something. So in this case, we have the three uh, first question are very common in the learning process. How old are you? How tall are you? And how are you are very common. There are very easy questions. And now it says discussion question with how. We have another um, part of this um, topic that is the discussion questions with how. So in this case, we can use this kind of question to create a, a discussion. When you want to, to people talk about a specific topic, you can use this kind of question using how. You are going to create a conversation club. You are going to create a, a conversation practice. So you can create this kind of questions to make people talk. Para esas discusiones o, o las preguntas de discusión, las vamos a utilizar cuando queremos crear ese tipo de ambiente, una discusión, un eh, grupo de práctica, de, ya sea del idioma o de un tema en específico, o cuando queremos hacer que las personas den su opinión acerca de algo. So we have the first one, how can you make money online? Number two, how can you uh, make money from home? Number three, how many people do you know who can speak English? Number four, how long have you been learning English? Number five, how many people do you know who can speak Chinese? How many beers can you drink in one night? That is a, a question that we are going to use it as, a, as an example. How many days can you go without eating? That's not very, very healthy. It is something bad. Number eight, how fast can you run? How much depth do you have? Number 10, how long does it take to get to work by bus from your house? Eleven, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? How 
How many hours of sleep do you get every night? How much money can you save each month? How much money do you have in your wallet? How tall are you? That is basic question. How beautiful is your crush? Or in this case, the person, the person you like. How many pair of jeans do you have? How difficult is to learn English? So we have here some examples of a uh, discussion questions. And in this case, it's um, this kind of question in which we can produce some uh, specific information um, that people want to know. In this case, we have some examples of these uh, questions that we can ask for our group when we are um, trying to practice the production of the language. And we have, how can you make money online? In this case, you are asking for advice in some cases because you want to know uh, how can people make money working online. Then you have the number two, how can you make money from home? That is related to the number one because you are working online and also you are working in your home. So you want to know how can you make money working from your home? Then in the number three, you have how many people do you know who can speak English? In this case, you can ask for a list of people that you know that is speaking English, and you can uh, talk about maybe give some information about those uh, people that you know that is speaking English. Then, how long have you been learning English? In this case, or in this question, you can uh, tell how much time do you have learning English, and you can um, give some information uh, or tell the experience that you have in, in this process. Then how many people do you know who can speak uh, Chinese? In this case, it's the same like in the question number three, because you are going to, if you uh, know someone that is speaking Chinese, you can talk about the people that you know that is speaking uh, this language and you um, give some information about that people. How many beers can you drink in one night? It's talking about um, and how many, in this case, uh, beers can you drink in one night? How many days can you go without eating? This is not very good. It is an example. How fast can you run? How much depth do you have? This is a very personal question, but it uh, can function as an example. How long does it take to get to work by bus from your house? Uh, you are going to talk about how uh, long does it take to go to your work if you are going to use the bus to get there. Then how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? If you are a person that likes a lot of coffee, you can talk about how many uh, cup of um, coffee do you drink a day? 
How many hours of sleep do you get every night? I think it is not a lot of time to sleep in the night. You have some hours, maybe one to three hours, four hours of sleeping every night. I don't know. Uh, how much money can you save each month? This is very, um, this answer, it's depending of first the, the money that we earn in our jobs. Uh, also, it depends on uh, the uh, structure that we follow with our money because there are people that is very, very good saving money and there are people that we are not very good saving money. So in this case, it is uh, something uh, that can um, depend on the people. How much money do you have in your wallet? None. We have, uh, I don't have any money in my, in my wallet. But this is a, a question that we can change with our experience. Uh, how tall are you? In this case, we are going to talk about the size and in the um, how tall we are. How beautiful is your crush or the person you like? You can express uh, your thoughts about that person and you can um, describe it. Uh, uh, she or her appearance. Um, then we have how many pairs of jeans do you have? In this question, we can um, use it as an example. And the last one, how difficult is to learn English? In this case, you can talk about your experience learning English or learning a new language. And, and you can add some things that you want to say about the learning process or uh, you can say something that you want to say about this process or if you have questions, advices, and so on. So, in este caso, estamos hablando de este tipo de preguntas que nos van a servir para crear un ambiente de eh, donde vamos a platicar, ¿verdad? vamos a producir, vamos a eh, hablar en inglés. Lo podemos utilizar en los, en los discussion groups en eh, este tipo de grupos donde vamos a practicar, vamos a hablar, vamos a discutir. Y son ese tipo de preguntas. Podemos formar más. In this case, they are just examples. So, now we are going to develop the topic number two. In this case, we are going to end the topic of the how and the question and answers and the discussion questions. Now, we are going to talk about a, a structure or a tense. And we are going to talk about the present continuous. That is the topic that we are going to develop right now. Present continuous. So in this case, the present continuous indicates that an action or condition is happening now frequently and may continue in the future. So it says, the present continues, verb tense indicates that an action or condition is happening now. frequently and may continue in the future. Tenemos la primera parte del de present continuous. Ese es el tense que vamos a estar utilizando. Estamos hablando de una parte del de tiempo en presente. Uh, it says that the present continuous verb tense indicates that an action or condition is happening now, frequently, and may continue in the future. Esta estructura nos habla o nos indica de que una acción o una condición está pasando en este preciso momento, frecuentemente, y que va a continuar en el futuro. So in this case, we are talking about an action that is happening right now, but then it's going to continue in the future. It is not going to end right now. So we have here, 
the present continuous formula. We have here, we need to create the sentence with this, the verb to be that we already know that is in present is um, and are plus the verb in present participle. So that's the structure or the formula that we uh, need to create this kind of sentence. The verb to be in present is on um, an R and the verb in present participle. So we have some example. And the example says, they are eating at a Scott's favorite restaurant today. So we have here the example. We're going to mark the parts that we need. We have here the verb to be and the verb in present participle. So para la creación de oraciones con este tiempo, tenemos que vamos a utilizar el verbo to be en presente dependiendo de la, eh, de la persona del singular o del plural que estemos utilizando. Then we have the verb in present participle. Tenemos el verbo en presente participio, que básicamente es el verbo o la forma eh, base del verbo con el ing al final. That's the, past, the present participle. Obviously, we need the pronoun or the subject. Then we have the verb to be. Then we have the uh, verb in present participle. And then we have the complement. Tenemos el sujeto, el verbo to be en presente, el verbo en presente participio y el complemento para crear estas oraciones. That's very simple. Then it says, the present continuous or present progressive is a way to convey any action or condition that is happening right now, frequently, and may be ongoing. It adds energy and action to writing and its effect help readers understand what the action is happening. So we have here the specification. Now we are going to mark the important parts of this specification. It says, the present continuous is a way to convey any action or condition that is happening right now frequently and maybe ongoing. So we have here, it's a way to convey 
to this part. It adds energy and action to writing. We have here, we add energy and action to writing and its effect helps the reader to understand when the action is happening. So the effect is that people can understand when the action is happening. So, tenemos que este, este, este tense eh, nos va a ayudar a hablar, ¿verdad? De cualquier acción o condición que está pasando en este momento frecuentemente y que va a continuar. Le agrega energía y acción a lo que estamos escribiendo o lo que estamos hablando y el efecto ayuda al lector o a la persona que escucha a entender cuando pasó una acción. So in this case, we are talking about um, a specific order or things that are happening in some specific time. So we have some examples. And we are going to do it like this. We are going to mark the past tense and then we are going to uh, express something in this moment. So this first example is in past tense. And it says, they waited at the red line And Scott worried they might miss their reservation. Then we are going to express the things that we are doing in this uh, moment. So in this case, we are going to use the present continuous. So in the first sentence we had that is in the past and it says they waited at the red light and Scott worried they might miss their reservation. So in those uh, in that sentence we said that they are going to some place. They are going to do something and Scott is worried that they miss their reservation at the uh, restaurant. So in that case, the action is happening in the past, but now we are going to know uh, what is happening right now because we need to know what is the action that is happening right now. So in this case, the present continuous says, they are sitting at a Scott's favorite place, the one with the sparkling red plastic seats. For how long? We don't know. But we do know that they are sitting there now. So la diferencia o, o como usamos nosotros esta um, estructura es que primero podemos comenzar con una acción que se inició en el pasado o maybe en el presente. Pero lo que básicamente nosotros queremos con el present continuous tense es especificar las acciones que están sucediendo, ¿verdad? En orden. So in this case, the second one is in present continuous that they are sitting in, in some specific place 
and they are doing that action in this moment. Then we have another um, action that is happening right now. We know that they are sitting in some place, but now also it's happening something else. And it says that what the waiter is standing behind the counter right now with a notepad. in his hand. And pencil behind his ear. So we have another action that is happening in this moment. So they are sitting in some specific place in the restaurant and they are waiting because we know that they are waiting. Then the waiter is standing behind the counter right now and he has a notepad in his hand and a pencil behind his ear. So tenemos dos acciones que están pasando en este momento. Primero, ellos es, están sentados en un, en un lugar específico que tiene eh, estos a, asientos que son como brillantes de plástico rojo. Then we have the waiter. Tenemos al mesero que está parado detrás del mostrador y tiene un eh, blog de notas o algo en lo que puede anotar los pedidos en la mano y tiene también un eh, pencil behind his ear. So in this case, we have two actions that are happening in this moment. And that's the point of this, um, the present continuous tense because we are marking the action that are happening right now in this um, specific time. It says that it, there is a momentum sometimes um, when the writers use this tense to add suspense or humor in fictional pieces. What kind of pancakes will Scott and his own order? The suspense is killing me. So in this case, we are going to talk about that um, this specific tense is used to create a pause and to add suspense to the, um, the things that we are hearing. En este caso, también estamos diciendo, ¿verdad? Que agregamos suspenso, una pausa a lo que estamos hablando y um, obtenemos lo que es la atención de la persona que escucha o de la persona que está, en este caso, eh, escuchando, ¿verdad? Que está leyendo lo que nosotros estamos hablando o especificando. So, this is for adding a uh, suspense or pause in the story that we are uh, talking about. But in the... Uh, we have some specific structure or we have some specific formula that we are going to um, use to create this kind of sentence. So in this case, we are going to see what are the, um, the formulas that we have for this present continuous tense. So we have
So we have to be. Um, is R plus the verb in present participle. So we have some examples. We are going to create some examples. So for the first one, we have the verb to be. Obviously, we need to have the um the subject. So we are going to do it with the, uh, the, the specific formula for um, this verb to be. We are going to do it with all of the uh, person of the, uh, or, or the pronouns. So we are going to begin with I. I am, and we are going to use verbs with ing ending. I am doing my homework. So we have the structure right here. I'm doing my homework when? Now, in this moment. Then we have number two. You are eating an apple. So we have here the structure. You are eating. Then we have she is playing with her sister. She's playing with her sister. We have here the structure. Then we have number four, he, he, he is playing the guitar. So in the first one, in the number three, we have, she is playing. In this case, she is doing this action. She is um, having fun. Ella está jugando con su hermana. And the number four, we are talking about another action. In this case, she uh, he is touching. But in this case, it is not like touch. Um, él está tocando, making music with the guitar. So we have a playing, but in one a sentence is jugar, and in the second one is tocar. So we have two different um, meanings for the same uh, verb. Then we have it. It is, is barking. At the, at the fly. It is working at the fly. Le está ladrando a la mosca. Then we have number six, but we already used you, so we are going to omit that a pronoun. So we are going to continue with we. We are singing that sad song. We are singing. Then we have number seven. They are cooking dinner. So we have here seven examples with the structure. They are not very uh, difficult to create. In this case, we are doing um, just short uh, sentence. But if you want to create another sentence that is uh, long, you can do it. In this case, we are going to create another uh, example that is a long one. Maybe we are going to say, I am going to visit my grandmother at her house. 
I need to take with me some medicine and food. So we have a long one. I'm going to visit my grandmother. I mean, I'm going here. I'm going to visit my grandmother at her house. I need to take with me some medicines and food. That's very easy because we have the formula and we are going to uh, follow that formula to create this kind of sentence. Para crear estas oraciones es bastante simple, ¿verdad? Si seguimos la fórmula, vamos a poder crear este tipo de oraciones, tanto cortas como largas. Eh, y tenemos ahí usando los pronombres y el verbo to be en uso de estos pronombres, siguiendo, ¿verdad? Las reglas que ya tenemos para crearlos. So, when we use the present continuous tense, cuando utilizamos este eh, specific eh, tense. That is the question, when to use. Okay, when to use the present continuous tense? In this case, it says that we use the present continuous tense with the appropriate to be verb and dynamic verb. And it says that a dynamic verb shows action and or process. So in this case, we are going to do it like with the examples. We are going to use the verb to be with the specific subject or pronoun. Then we are going to use these uh, tense with the dynamic verbs that are those verbs that can uh, perform an action. Dos cosas que necesitamos saber de cuando utilizar este eh, tense o esta estructura. Dice que la vamos a utilizar primero de forma adecuada con el verbo to be, que es lo que ya hacíamos con los ejemplos, el is, el am y el are especificando el sujeto que va a utilizar cada uno de ellos. Then we are going to use the dynamic verb. Vamos a utilizar los verbos dinámicos. Y dice que los verbos dinámicos son aquellos que muestran acciones y procesos. Those are the dynamic verbs. But why are we talking about the dynamic verbs? Because we are going to see the uh, steady verbs that we are going to make a difference between them. So, the first one is the action or the uh, dynamic verbs. So we have some examples. She is yelling goodbye. To her friends outside. And Scott hopes she is. And it's called Hope She Doesn't. Also, I've seen. Since 
she is always So we have here, she is a gelling. We have here the structure. Then we have, she is always embarrassing. In this case, we're using the always in the middle, but there is no difference in the structure. So. Okay. Um, we have first. Tenemos este tipo de verbos que son acciones, ¿ya? Estas acciones. Sabemos que los verbos son acciones, pero específicamente hablan de acciones, de cosas que se hacen. So, the first one, she is yelling. Ella está gritando, está haciendo una acción de gritar. She is yelling goodbye to her friends outside. Ella le está gritando adiós a sus amigos que están afuera del edificio. Scott hopes she doesn't cause any scene since she is always embarrassing him in public. Scott eh, espera que ella no cree o cause una escena siempre, eh, desde que ella siempre crea estas eh, vergüenzas. We can say like that. Because he feels embarrassed when she yells in public. So in this case, we are talking about things that is happening in that moment. Los, eh, estos verbos que son acciones, que sabemos que la mayoría de verbos expresan acciones, pero ya vamos a ver por qué hacemos énfasis en los verbos que crean acciones. Porque no todos hacen este tipo de acciones, no, no, no um, desenvuelven este tipo de acciones, sino que también hablan de otro tipo de cosas que se pueden hacer. In this case, we are going to use this, um, this structure with uh, the dynamic verbs. And in this case, we have the other question. When not to use the present continuous tense. So we have in the first part, when to use it, and in this case, when not to use it. So it says, don't use the present continuous tense with a stated verbs. Is a stated verbs. Show a state of a being So it says, don't use the present continuous tense with the steady verbs. Uh, and in this case, the steady verbs show a state of being that does not show qualities of change. These verbs can stay in the simple present. Cuando tenemos estos verbos estáticos, porque en español los conocemos como verbos estáticos, son aquellos verbos que muestran un estado del ser. So in this case, they are not like action. Ellos no muestran acciones, sino estados del ser. And in this case, it can be feelings, thoughts, and all of that. Pueden ser sentimientos, pensamientos y todo eso. En ese caso, no vamos a utilizar el, el presente continuo, sino que nos vamos a quedar siempre con el simple present, el presente simple. In este caso, con los steady verbs, we cannot use the present uh, progressive or present continuous, I mean. And we have some examples. It says,
Aunt Christine is preparing the maple walnut pancake over the banana peanut butter ones that Scott loves. But in this case, we cannot use prefer with the ing form. So we are going to use the refers, the verb in um, present. This is the verb and we are going to mark like this because we are not going to do it in ing form. So in this case, in this verb, we are um, creating or showing that they are talking about something that they prefer, something that they like. So in this case, it's talking about feelings because it says, on Christine prefers the maple walnut pancakes over the banana peanut butter, ones that, love, that Scott loves. So in that case, it is not an action. It is that something that is happening inside. So in this case, we are not going to use the present, um, the present continuous, right? So we are going to say the steady verb to prefer shows opinion. They are showing opinion, and therefore it should not be conjugated into the present continuous. A steady verbs categories include emotion, that is to love possession to belong and thought to recognize and none of these should use the present continuous form. So we are going to, to mark here which uh, verbs we are not going to use with the, this tense. Steady verbs, categories, include emotion and we have the example to love. Then we have possession. To belong, pertenecer. And And we have the example to recognize. So we have here the categories that we are not going to include in this uh, structure. We have the emotions, the possession, and the thoughts. And none of these we are going to use with the, um, the present continuous uh, form. But we have, and this is almost the last thing we are going to say about this, because it's almost time to end the session. It says the exception for the rule, because we have some exceptions in some cases, because we have some uh, verbs that are dynamic and are stative. Tenemos siempre una, um, una excepción a la regla. Siempre va a haber una excepción a la regla, porque hay algunos verbos que son dinámicos y son estáticos, y esos son eh, algunos verbos que sí podemos utilizar en, este, eh, en esta estructura porque se utilizan de las dos formas. 
So we are going to, to have here the exception to the rule. And we have here some verbs can be both dynamic and stated. And we have the examples. We have to be and we have to think. They are the exception for the rule because they can be a stative and they can be a dynamic. Because in some cases, the verb to be is showing action. So in that case, it is um, like an, a dynamic verb. So we have uh, some examples. And it says, the waiter thinks, in this case, we're using it in a present simple. School shoe. Save room. Or pumpkin pie. So in this case, uh, this verb is a uh, stative and it is in simple present. Donde dice que el eh, mesero piensa que Scott debería guardar. In, in this case, a room is guardar espacio para el pay de calabaza. So, el, el piensa. That's not an action. That is something that he uh, is thinking. But the same example is like this. The waiter, the waiter is thinking about getting a new job that requires less human interaction. So we have here, is thinking, está pensando, In this case, he is doing or performing something. So in that case, we have the um, dynamic verb that is in present continuous. And that's the difference. The, the first one is not an action because he is just doing some action in, her, in his mind. And in the next one is considering something. So that is the action and we can do it like this. So now it's time to end this session. We are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you. See you. See you tomorrow.